tomorrow, Here the New go. South Wales Premier has announced that all non-essential businesses will close. How will these businesses survive this crisis? Well, obviously, these issues will be discussed at the National Cabinet later tonight, and there will also be a meeting of the medical experts, of which the states are uh, represented. Um, obviously, today's second package is designed to support small businesses and medium-sized businesses and their employees in an unprecedented way. It's a $66 billion package that will support pensioners, retirees, casual workers, sole traders and millions of Australians. And obviously our focus is on helping people get to the other side. If you're one of the tens of thousands of businesses uh, who are a non-essential service, and, and this is what the Premier said, that an essential service is a supermarket, a petrol station, a pharmacy, a convenience store, freight or logistics and home delivery. So if you don't fall into that category, what is the unprecedented, this massive package that you've announced today, uh, what will it give these small businesses? Well, what we have said is that small businesses uh, will receive up to $100,000 uh, based on the size of their wages bill as a way of encouraging small businesses to keep on their staff. We're also uh, strengthening and enhancing uh, the w so, uh, welfare safety net by providing a new coronavirus supplement of $550 a fortnight. That's on top of other payments. So that's going to be a very substantial uh, way to help cushion the blow for those people who very unfortunately lose their job or get stood down. In terms of the payments for New Start, uh, do you have projections on how many people will start receiving uh, New, Start, New Start for the first time as a result of the job losses that are expected? Well, Treasury have uh, looked at these issues and, and have costed around up to a million uh, people uh, getting this new payment uh, from September. And are these uh, a million new people or in total a million people? Well, potentially it could be. Uh, obviously, we, you don't know what the, the true economic impact uh, will be on the, uh, on the economy, but what we have, have seen is a, a dramatic impact already uh, and it will obviously uh, continue uh, to be ever-present for months on end. So just to clarify that, we could have a million new people receiving New Start because they've lost their jobs? We could have up to a million people getting this new job seeker um, coronavirus supplement uh, and that's what we have looked at in the context of what is happening across the economy. But again, um, these are very uncertain times and the important point to, to mention here is that some of those people who get the job seeker supplement Shari may not be uh, unemployed. They may be people who have had reduced hours uh, as casuals or, re um, or reduced income as sole traders or people who have been stood down uh, from their particular business but remain still attached to, to that employer. So there's a range of situations where people can access this new uh, coronavirus supplement uh, but continue to, to work in some form. Well, let's go to the unemployment rate then. And I understand, uh, you know, no one knows how this is going to unfold with any certainty, of course not. But what do some of your projections show about how, how high the unemployment rate could get this year? I mean, are we speaking double digits or could it even be as high as during the Great Depression? Well, look, these are very uncertain times, Shari, and uh, I don't think it adds um, uh, to, to, to the body of... Um, the body of the discussion by, uh, by speculating. What I do know uh, is that people will lose their jobs, businesses will close, but the government is doing everything um, to support uh, those people who may lose their job as well as supporting businesses to keep people in a job. Today's package of measures, $66 billion. On top of the first package, on top of the $105 billion that we injected into the economy with the RBA, uh, is a total of $189 billion that has been announced in just the last 10 days. That's nearly 10% of GDP and that reflects the gravity of the situation. Yeah, it's, it's extraordinary and, and you have moved quickly with this Treasurer. Look, you, you have announced that both banks and the government will work together to give uh, people mortgage holidays, to give landlords mortgage holidays. But one of the biggest concerns about small business is their ability to meet their rent. And I know you've already you know, asked
ask landlords uh, you know, to, be, to be sympathetic to this. But, but is there a measure, is there something you can do um, to actually protect small businesses who can't pay their rent during this time when they are forced to close uh, because they're a non-essential service? Well, there's a couple of points there. Firstly, we've worked very closely with the banks uh, on a package of measures that they announced on Friday, which will see their small business customers not have any payments for six months. That's very, very significant. That could be a payment on a loan that they took out to, to fit out their office. That could be on a vehicle. That could be, indeed, on their mortgage that they drew down on to support their small business. Uh, so that will provide significant relief for small businesses at this time, and that is now available to small businesses. But do you think at the, the same time, the yeah. states are work. Sorry, the states are working uh, on uh, what um, uh, options they have uh, through land tax and other means to uh, reduce the rental obligations on businesses that are obviously going to do it very tough at this time. Okay. Look, you have announced an unprecedented stimulus package in our nation's history already, as you just said. Do you think we can expect to see even more money poured in over the coming months? Well, this is not a set and forget announcement today. This builds on our first announcement and our other initiatives. We'll do what it takes to support Australian jobs and Australian businesses. Uh, we continue, obviously, uh, to work very closely with our state counterparts, with industry. This is a Team Australia moment and we need to build that bridge to, to the recovery. And we know it may take six months or more. Uh, but there will be the other side to the coronavirus and we want the Australian economy and the Australian people to bounce back stronger than ever. Well, looking at the other side uh, of this crisis, are you expecting the rebound to be something that happens fairly quickly or will it be protracted? Well, again, we're in the realm of the unknown here. Only the scientists and the medical researchers and the doctors uh, will solve for the uh, coronavirus because they're the ones who will come up with a vaccine. Um, the bankers, the politicians uh, and, uh, and the public servants, uh, we can help mitigate some of the pain. We can help uh, introduce some of these economic measures of support. But at, at the end of the day, this is a health crisis which will have a health solution. Uh, and that's what we know will determine um, the timing and the rate and speed of the recovery. Treasurer, you're the second most senior person uh, in the Liberal Party, the deputy leader of the Liberal Party. Um, right now, the government faces accusations, particularly from the medical quarter, of being underprepared, of taking too long to implement travel ban that only came into effect at midnight on Friday, of taking too long to put everything into shutdown. Uh, why hasn't the Morrison government been overprepared and overcautious in its approach to this unprecedented crisis? Well, we've continued to take the medical advice every step of the way. And we make no apologies for the, um, the early restrictions we put in travel on, uh, on travel to Australia. We also uh, obviously put in place the social distancing laws and today the Prime Minister foreshadowed that there'll be further discussions at the National Cabinet tonight about more measures uh, to protect the health and the safety of Australians. But in terms of the social distancing, you know, people didn't understand what that meant and, and it's only, I mean, West Sunday, it was just nine days ago on Friday uh, that the Prime Minister said he would be attending a football match that weekend, which obviously he didn't end up going to, but it was just nine days ago he said life is continues as usual and he would be attending a football match so you can understand why uh, you know there are mixed messages to the public you know shouldn't the the Morrison government have taken an overly cautious position in implementing earlier travel bans and earlier lockdown downs to contain the spread of this virus so that the economic impact ultimately uh, wouldn't last as long and the virus would be contained well, our focus has always been on the health of Australians, first, second and third. Uh, that, uh, that is what is determining and driving the decision making. Uh, the economics are coming uh, a very distant fourth to all of that. The focus is on getting people um, the health support 
uh, and we've made a number of announcements on that uh, that they need, um, but also the, the measures that we've put in place, whether it's around our borders or whether it's domestically, have been based on the best available medical advice. Um, Australians have been quite disgusted that a cruise ship with infected coronavirus passengers was allowed to dock in Sydney and 2,700 passengers spread across the country and now health authorities are engaged in quite a desperate effort to try and track them. This is pure incompetence. Why was this allowed to happen? Well, again, um, Border Force, the, the state medical authorities are working together on, on a range of, of these related matters. And, and of course, uh, our focus is on getting people the support that they need. And we do need the federal and the state governments to continue to work together as we have done today. Can you understand why people would be disappointed in this and, and think that the government's incompetent when infected passengers were just allowed off a cruise ship uh, rather than quarantined on the ship or, or everyone, you know, had their uh, temperature checked before getting off? Well, look, these are unprecedented times and we are working across state boundaries and I, and I actually do think um, that the National Cabinet has worked well. But of course, the virus continues to evolve. Its economic impact continues uh, to, to worsen. And, and we, as a government, are taking the necessary steps uh, to, to support uh, the, uh, the medical authorities at this time of need. Treasurer, I'm really grateful for your time and for you joining uh, me you. tonight. Thank you.